Hey everybody, this is Perch, and we've talked about the rising cost of comics. Well, here's a question just about that. It says, uh, hey Perch, you mentioned that the people inside DC and Marvel are planning to increase the price of comics in the next couple of years, and will likely have a pretty dismal impact on them. My question is, do they ever learn from any of these experiences? Or is it basically the very definition of insanity at both companies? Well, you know, in many cases, it's it's not necessarily insanity. It's just the they feel like they're backed into doing this. And in many cases, the people who are making these decisions are a bit disconnected from the actual consumers that are that are buying them. I mean, increasingly, you see people in leadership positions talk fondly about comic stores, but then also talk about how they haven't been to a comic shop in over a year. And for a while, it was like, well, COVID, okay. But we've got conventions and other things rolling now. If, if you haven't been to a comic shop since, uh, you know, I, Joe Biden won and the virus went away, then you, what, what's going on with you in all seriousness? I, I mean, I think I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. But um, I, 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 <laughs> I, I guess I just don't get it. Um, but that's that's really what's going on. I think that you have this case where and Joe Kassad did an interview a couple of years ago where he talked about how he felt that comic books were a better investment than a video game. And his comment was that, you know, video games are just like computer graphics that are doing all the work. But with comics, the artists are lovingly crafting these books. It's a collectible. It's something that is unique. It's uh, somebody drawing something basically for you and 24 other thousand people who buy the comic. But it is, uh, you know, it, 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 when he said that, and I, I need to go back and find that exact quote because one of those, the, the weirdest kind of analysis quotes that I remember hearing, because it felt extremely out of touch. It felt like somebody who didn't realize a relative value. It felt like somebody who hadn't been in a comic shop. Collectors are rabid and definitely they like to buy comics and they keep going long after, you know, common sense would tell them they shouldn't. But um, all the same, it's, it's you know, a, 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 there are limits. And now I, I say, you know, I, I've talked about rising comics. I've said it's going to be inevitable. Um, I know that at least one of the two companies, they're seriously talking about uh, raising the comics a dollar, basically bringing all the lower selling ones up. That's Marvel. And at DC, you know, it's if Marvel does it, DC will follow suit. Maybe not immediately, but quickly. And in both cases, they're eyeing these $8, $9 comics and saying, you know, we really need to get more of those out. These anniversary issues that DC did for a while were very successful. We should do more of those. What's what's the gimmick? How do we do it? And almost resigned to the idea that if we're going to be a niche business, we're going to sell fewer comics, we should at least make as much as we can off the comics that we do sell. And so that becomes the challenge that uh, that, that that we're in. But it's it's it is insanity, but it's insanity. Uh, I mean, it's it's really misunderstanding the market. And I think it's also, it, it, it has a certain amount of, uh, if you'll pardon the expression, smelling your own farts kind of behavior where, yes, I love comics. I think the artists absolutely work hard. You know, a, a craftsman artist may get a page done a day, you know, and that's a, that's a labor of love. That's a lot of work. Um, all the same, you know, you can't charge eight, nine dollars for that comic. You, you just, you, you, people will opt out, even if it is amazing, even if the art is great. I've said this before in other videos, and I, I believe it's true. I mean, right now you could say you bring back Jim Lee and Chris Claremont, and you throw them back on X-Men again. And you say, hey, we, we're reuniting this art team. It's going to be amazing. It's going to come out monthly. Yes, for at least one year. It's going to come out every single month, no delays. And then you said, uh, it's, yeah, it's going to cost $9.99 an issue, 22-page issue, $9. Even though this is an art team, a writer-artist team that people believe is legendary, that they love, and, and everything else, People are going to nope out of that. At that price, they will. I, there will be some who will buy it grudgingly, but even those people are going to feel it's abnormally expensive. It's, it's, it's becoming less about the creative team. Definitely, you need talent on a book, but and more about just excessive costs. And these costs are becoming excessive, and that's kind of where we're sitting right now. I, um, I don't know. I, 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 I hate to see it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I think it's a misunderstanding of the market. It's a little bit of a, but, but, you know, this stuff's so valuable and so impressive. And I mean, you just wind up comparing it to weird things in the Cassad interview. He's like, you know, $60 video game. Look at the entertainment you get for a $4 comic. It's like, yeah, but that video game's going to take you, you know, 10 hours to play. Or if it's an, you know, an EA game, maybe two hours to play, but it's still going to take you a long time to play. And that's the, that's the crazy part. That's the crazy part of all this. It's they're not comparable products, and you shouldn't. The second you start comparing them, it's just, 
you're on the wrong track. But the mail goes on. There's another part to it here. So we're going to read that too. It says, uh, second question, it's related. Why in God's name are digital comics the same price as printed comics? I get why printed comics cost as much as they do. Paper quality, collector's market, etc. I mean, I don't, but I'm, I'm glad you do. But with digital comics, they have literally none of those qualities. There's zero paper, zero distribution. And because they don't have all the qualities of the printed stuff, shouldn't digital comics be a lot less than the printed ones? I mean, they should. In any kind of rational, sane world, they would be. But the digital comic price being the same, um, now in this case, in many ways, we have to blame the retailers. Uh, the retailers, when digital started coming out through an absolute fit, and DC made a big deal of, don't worry, uh, there was a lot of capitulation at Comic Pro and, and down at the San Diego Comic Con where some of this erupted, where DC in particular said, we are not going to undercharge on digital and we'll even have digital come out later because we believe in the comic shops, we don't want to hurt your business, and so uh, don't worry, we're gonna, we, we, won't, we won't interfere. And you saw a lot of people, I mean, you, know, you saw Brian here, the usual, the usual suspects of, of comic uh, retailers making a lot of noise about how digital was going to kill the comic market. So in many ways, the restrictions uh, came about, so many of them, that uh, the, the comic market kind of killed digital. Now that's not, I mean, the publisher definitely had a responsibility here to say, wait a minute, guys, this is, the market doesn't work that way. Don't worry. We're going to take care of you. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's a plan where everybody survives. I mean, that, that would have taken leadership and, and the, the comic publishers didn't step up and do that. But in many cases, this whole nonsense, which, and there's been several of these and it's, it's on the retailers, the, you know, Hey, uh, we'd rather see, uh, you know, variant editions and speculator pricing than a sane digital strategy. Or we want you to refuse to sell this stuff to Walmart. It might increase the amount of uh, visibility into these comics, but you know that's going to kill the comic industry. You start to really hate, and, and long before YouTube and a lot of these channels came along, I was very, very sick of the person wandering up and down the street with a sign saying, the comic industry is dying. The comic, this is killing the comic industry. A lot of, when I make these comments, everybody points to some YouTuber who happens to be saying that and they're like, oh, Birch is taking a shot at you. But this goes way back before that. When comics were gonna be sold at Walmart, it was gonna kill the comic industry. It was dead, absolutely dead. The comic industry breathed its last gasp, said Brian Hibbs when they started selling comics at Walmart. When they said, uh, we're gonna come out with digital. And for a while there, it's like, we're gonna be day and date with digital. Digital still cost you the same as print, which as you point out, is insane. But uh, you know, we're gonna do day and date. That's gonna kill comics. Comics market's dead. Hold a funeral for the comics market. It hasn't happened. It obviously hasn't happened and it's getting in the way of progress. As you've seen in probably a lot of the comment boards uh, or comments here and on other channels, there are plenty of people that are never gonna to go to digital. They don't like it, they like the printed version, that's what they prefer, they're, they're gonna to continue to shell out money for that. And that's fine. Which kind of goes to the point of digital can be a powerful tool for you if you artificially suppress it like they have by making it the same price and, and putting all these restrictions around it. All you're doing is killing off a feeder market who many cases most likely will go to printed books at some point. There is a lot of data to suggest that even people who pirate books, the stuff they really love, they go to the store and they buy the physical version. They don't go to comiXology and buy the digital version. They want the printed paper. And, and, and that's, that's kind of human nature. So these things have to find a way to coexist. But there's, there is no reason why digital should be the same cost of print. And all it's doing is hurting both digital and print because it would be wonderful marketing and wonderful ways to get people into the market if they just made that stuff next to zero cheap and, and drug people into comics. Anyway, a lot of changes happening certainly over the next uh, couple of years if we truly do head into the recession like I believe we do and inflation continues to be high. Uh, it's just gonna put a lot of market pressures on this. People are gonna ask, you know, hey, do I wanna buy this video game or do I wanna go and buy this comic? And I think if people start making those comparisons, comics loses. Uh, anyway, curious what you think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, as always. And thanks for listening.